Hello, welcome to my channel and thanks for tuning into this video. Today I'm doing a video based on a suggestion from someone who commented on one of my recent videos. Sharuk suggested that I do a video where I talk about what my makeup collection would be if I weren't doing YouTube videos. And I thought that was such a great idea. So I'm gonna take that and shift it a little bit because I think even if I weren't doing YouTube videos, I would still have a very large collection. I had quite a large collection before I started my YouTube channel, but that is one of the reasons that I started my channel. It was to, you know, make better use of my makeup and be able to share my makeup collection and talk about it more, you know, to people who would be interested in it. But yeah, it was a very large collection before I started my channel. So I'm just going to talk about if I weren't completely obsessed with makeup and beauty, what I think my makeup collection would look like. So if you'd like to see that, just keep on watching. I'm gonna start with uh, the base, so complexion products. I think I would have two foundations, one with a higher coverage and a more matte finish, and one with a lighter coverage and a more natural or radiant finish. So starting with the higher coverage foundation, I think I would have the Shiseido Synchro Skin Self-Refreshing Foundation. This it remains one of my favorites and I just think it's a really excellent foundation. It lasts so well, it looks really nice on the skin, and I think I would definitely have this in my collection. For the lighter coverage one, I've chosen the Chantecaille Future Skin Gel Foundation. This is a more recent purchase for me, but I think that this is one that if I ha only had two foundations, this would be one that I would want to have because it has such a natural but perfecting finish. The shade of this I find is quite good for me. This is the shade Aura. And the reason I bought this one is I kept seeing so many people wearing it, mainly on Instagram, but sometimes on YouTube too. And every time I saw the picture, I would think, wow, their foundation, their skin looks so amazing. It looks like real skin, but just so perfect. And anytime I checked what they were wearing when I thought that it was this foundation. So I think that I would have this in my collection. For powder, I think that I would probably not have a loose powder. Um, I don't use loose powder that much. I prefer pressed powders. So what I've chosen is the La Mer Translucent Pressed Powder. This is one that you can see I've gotten quite a lot of use out of, but I haven't used it recently. I used it today, but I have other powders now that I prefer. And I find that this one is actually a little bit, it's not heavy, but it's just a little bit more matte and a little bit more powdery than I prefer. But I think that I probably wouldn't have done all the exploration that I've done with other powders um, and I would have probably stuck with this one because I, I've been very happy with this one but I've just since found more powders that I like better. And then for concealer I chose the Kosas concealer. This is in the shade 0 0.5. It's a good shade for me. It's a very light shade and quite neutral in tone so I really appreciate that. I think it covers well. It looks really nice under the eyes as well and works on blemishes and everything. So I just think this is a really excellent concealer. Nice, natural, leaning, radiant finish, and it wears really well. Now moving into the rest of the face, I'll start with bronzer. I think I would only have one bronzer, and it would be the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer in the shade Fair. And that's because this is the lightest or one of the lightest bronzers that exists. And this is what I would have been aware of, I think. And I'm really, I really love this bronzer and I love Charlotte Tilbury products as well. So I think that I would have gone for this and been very happy with just having this one. I don't think I would have contour products. I probably just wouldn't have gotten that, that into makeup that I would have started trying out contour products. But for blushes, I do think I would have a few blushes. I think I would have uh, these two from Salt New York, Rose and Peach, those are the two that were sort of formulated for the lightest skin tones. I think I would also have the shade Raspberry, that's in another palette. It's just, it's a step deeper than the Rose, but still in a cool tone. It's a really nice, vibrant, bright, sort of berry pink color. And that's a type of blush color that I've always gravitated to ever since I started wearing makeup as a teenager. So I think I would have that as well. 
And then for powder blushes, I think I would have the Dior Backstage. I would have this one, which is the shade Coral for a more peachy option. And I think I would also have the shade, the pink one, which I actually don't own because I have so many other blushes. I just haven't bought that one. But I think if I didn't have this huge collection, I would have bought the pink version of this and uh, would be very happy with it. I know uh, Rhonda, who watches my videos, she's been encouraging me to try the pink one. And I, I definitely will someday because it looks really beautiful. Um, but for now, I just have the coral one. But if I didn't have a big collection, I think I would have both the pink and the coral. And then for highlighter, I don't know that I would have moved into the cream highlight realm. So I just chose one and it's a powder highlighter. This is the MAC Double Gleam Highlighter. This is just a pretty perfect highlighter in my mind. It's a really nice tone. It's not too warm, not too icy. And uh, I just really like how it looks on my skin. It has no discernible glitter or anything like that. It's just a really nice smooth finish and you can build it up to be really bright or you can keep it a little bit more natural by just putting a smaller amount on and or using a fluffier brush. The majority of my makeup today is from these products that I'm talking about. So you can just check in the description box below and I'll have everything that I'm wearing on my face listed. Let's do eyes next. And I'm gonna start with eyeshadow. So I think that I would have this Victoria Beckham signature eye brick, this one. Um, these are just shades that are just great for every day. This palette is so easy to use. It's really nice and compact, but still feels lovely and luxurious. And I just think this is an excellent palette. And this would be definitely a go-to for every day if I had a smaller makeup collection and I weren't doing different things all the time and trying different makeup and doing different types of looks and so on. I would definitely be using that a lot. And then the other eye palette that I think I would have is this Tom Ford Soleil et Lune. This came out for the holidays in 2019. They came out with three quads in that collection. And this is actually the first Tom Ford palette that I ever bought. And I just... I bought it because it looked a lot like a palette, a little quad from the body shop that I bought in my teens, I think. And that quad from the body shop, it was basically the same colors as this. And it was in those little cubes that were all in this box together. And the moment I saw that little quad, I started saving for it and bought it. And unfortunately, it was a disappointment for me. It was like a wet dry formula similar to this, except that it wasn't a good formula, unfortunately. It just, I could never get color payoff from it, even when I was wetting my brush and everything. So it was a disappointment, but I loved the colors in it. But then when I saw that Tom Ford had come out with this one, I was so excited because this was like the luxe version of that palette. So um, I think I would definitely have this regardless of whether I had a big makeup collection or not. Then for eyeliner, I chose the Victoria Beckham Coco liner. You can see it's a well-loved and I've actually started using this more recently. I used it a lot and then I got my Chantecaille Jasper liner and this kind of fell by the wayside, but I've started using this again and the reason I had stopped was I found it smudged a lot, but actually I found a good technique now um, is if I have all of my powder eyeshadow on first and then I do this on my tight line and I can even do a little bit of you know proper liner, this doesn't smudge. Um, I haven't had any issues with it at all. And I think the other reason that it's been working better for me lately is because I changed my eye cream. So I used to use the Kiehl's Avocado Eye Treatment, which felt really lovely and I liked the way it looked, but I think that that was contributing to the smudging as well. Now I use an Innisfree eye cream and I haven't had any issues with smudging, but it's still giving me a great amount of moisture and everything that I want from an eye cream. So the Victoria Beckham Cocoa Liner, I think would definitely be in my collection. The other liner that I think I would have is the Chantecaille Olive Brocade. And I didn't bring it out, but I can put up a picture of it. And that is just, it's a kind of an olive khaki color. 
and that's an eyeliner color that I've always gravitated to and that I've always had in my collection. I used to use a CoverGirl one, I think it was called Grey Khaki or something like that, but they wouldn't last. Like, um, the liner wouldn't last very well on my eyes and also there seemed to be so little product in the thing that I was just going through them constantly. And I don't know if they even make it anymore, it became very hard to get. So the Chantecaille Olive Brocade Liner is kind of my luxe and better quality version of that CoverGirl one and that's the type of color that I always like to have, especially for a really light makeup look or a no makeup type makeup that olive color seems to work really well for me. For mascara, I chose the Essence Lash Princess, and this is a very affordable mascara from the drugstore. And I just don't think that if I weren't as into makeup as I am, I don't think I would have gotten into the luxury world for mascaras because this one is so good. And I've been really happy with this one and could probably be fine with just having this one in my collection. So that's what I would have for my mascara. Now last but not least into lips. I've pulled out two lipsticks. So the first is Charlotte Tilbury in Love with Olivia. And I actually haven't worn this in quite a while because it's been in my purse. I haven't been using my purse all that much. I haven't been going out too much. But that's what the color looks like and it's just a perfect pinky nude it's not too light though and it's just a really great everyday color it's in her satin formula so it's really comfortable to wear as well and i really love that lipstick and then the other lipstick that i chose was the lisa eldridge velvet fawn i think i would still be into lisa eldridge even if i weren't obsessed with makeup and i think that i definitely would have bought some of her lipsticks so that's what velvet fawn looks like i mean these are along similar lines, but you know, there are differences there. And today I've actually got both of them on. So I've got Velvet Fawn, you know, as my first layer. And then I top it off with a little bit of In Love With Olivia. In Love With Olivia is just a little bit peachier, a little bit warmer, I think, than Velvet Fawn. I think I might also have uh, Lisa Eldridge Velvet Morning. That's the really bright orangey red one that I did a video on pretty recently. If I were going to go for bright colors uh, before I became really into makeup, it was those bright orangey reds that I really liked. So I used to have the MAC Lady Danger along quite similar lines to the Lisa Eldridge Velvet Morning, but I prefer the Lisa Eldridge formula. So I think I might have that as well. And then I don't have this one to show you because it's in my jacket pocket. It lives there and I use it all the time. It's the Dior Lip Glow, like their balm, and it's the shade Rosewood Glow. I'll try to put a picture up here. And that's just, again, it's a really great everyday color. It gives you a little bit of tint, but it's predominantly a balm. And I really like that Dior Lip Glow formula, so that's something that I think I would always have on hand. And then for lip liner, I just chose one and it's Tiny. This is the Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil in the shade Wherever Walnut. And this is something that I first got as like, I got a mini one as one of those um, offers in one of my Sephora orders and I fell in love with it as soon as I started using it. And I still use this all the time, pretty much every day if I'm doing just like an everyday makeup or a no makeup makeup, I'm still using Wherever Walnut. So that is definitely something that I think I would always have in my collection. Oh, and I just remembered one other lipstick that I would have. I think I still would have had, you know, a few lipsticks. Um, MAC Twig. That was my first high-end lipstick that I ever bought and I just loved it so much. So the MAC Twig lipstick, it's kind of like um, a pinky rosewood color. It's deeper than the two lipsticks that I showed you, but still super flattering and really quite a nice natural looking, but a little bit darker lip. So those were all the products that I came up with for what I would have as my makeup collection if I weren't obsessed with makeup and or if I weren't doing YouTube and Instagram. Um, I think that's still a pretty good collection and it is still mostly luxury and high end because I think that's just what I, I would have gotten to that point. But I did leave some things out that 
I am really glad that I have, but I just don't think that I would have tried them, taken that leap, or even heard about some of the products if I weren't as into makeup as I am. So some of those things are like the Auric Glow Lust. I don't think I would have bought that one. Um, I didn't include any Chanel because I just don't think I would have taken the step to try things from Chanel. Uh, Dior is a different story because I've just naturally I've been more attracted to Dior products and for some reason I I wasn't always that drawn to Chanel and some other things like I wouldn't have any Hermes products. I would never have paid that much money for a lipstick or a blush if I weren't so into makeup. And I think the same with Westman Atelier. I probably would have heard of it, but it would just not be on my radar for something that I would pay that much money for. But again, that's something that I'm so glad that I have been able to try that brand because I love so many of their products. All right, so I think that's it for this video. Thank you so much to Sharuk for the suggestion for this video. It was such a great idea. And thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any comments or any questions below. And if you'd like to see more from me and you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I would really love for you to do so. Thanks again so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you in my next video.